Welcome back to Carolina this week. Dr. Holly Tankersley from Coastal Carolina University, a political science professor, is joining us this morning to talk a little bit about Super Tuesday, which is coming up. I suppose for the last 20 years or so, I've been watching the presidential races mm -hmm. come and go. This has got to be, maybe with the exception of when we had Ross Perot in the race, mm -hmm. one of the most interesting primaries in a long time. Absolutely. Very interesting primary. Um, because there are a number of candidates who stayed in for quite some time, this is a little bit different than the 2008 Democratic primary where the primary went on for several months, but there were really only two competitive candidates left. Here we have two, three even competitive candidates who still really think that they can make the delegates necessary to win the nomination. Right now Romney is ahead in the delegate count. In fact, I. Rick Santorum won just about all the delegates he has, even though he's won other states. Mm -hmm. When he won, when he, well, didn't win, but lost Michigan by three points. Right, yeah. So he's really, this battle is really, it, it seems to me it's, it's a battle for who can convince people that they represent the part of the party that they want to see lead the country. That's absolutely right. And that's one of the reasons this race has kind of gone on over a number of months and, and been so unusual is that we see a lot of di diversity in different states with regards to their Republicans um, and their conservatives in their state. So you have someone like Rick Santorum who can perform well in a more conservative state that maybe has more evangelical voters or Republicans who are more concerned about social issues. You have Mitt Romney who performs better in states that have Republican parties that are a little more moderate um, and maybe more concerned about fiscal issues or global economic issues. And so depending on what state we're in, what Tuesday, um, you really could see a different outcome. I've heard it mentioned that this could even, we could see a big surprise when it comes down to the convention mm -hmm. if votes don't go the way mm -hmm. the big, the big players in the party want them to go. Right. Do you, has that ever happened in the modern era? In the modern era, no. Since the nomination rules changes in the 60s and 70s, um, you really haven't seen a brokered convention. Um, that keeps popping up as a possibility. And, and I have to say that before this week, I kind of dismissed that talk as, as something that is not likely to happen at all. But now you're starting to see people talk a little bit about that delegate count. It's almost like a horse race in the newspaper and the media now. How many delegates does Romney have? How many does Santorum have? How many are available still? And because the, the story has changed a little bit, and now we're really talking about delegates and individual delegates, I think the possibility of a broker convention is greater, but in the grand scheme of things, still not likely to happen. I've even heard Jeb Bush's name thrown around, right. Chris Christie's name back <laughs> resurfacing. Sure, this Could somebody who's not even in the race right now walk away with the nomination in any realm of reality, I suppose? You know, I don't think so. It's kind of like, um, a, a little bit of a fantasy, I think, for people who aren't satisfied, who still aren't satisfied the with the Republican field. Um, it's awfully late for a candidate to start raising money um, and to get out there. Um, although people who pay close, close attention to American politics would know Jeb Bush or Chris Christie, a lot of average Americans don't know who those people are, or they may know the names, but they really don't know much about them. So for them to build the kind of campaign they would need to be successful in a short time is impossible. They would also have to be looking at building a campaign and a campaign war chest that goes well beyond the primary into the general. And it's really late for that at this point, given the amount of money that the other Republican candidates have raised and the amount of money that President Obama has raised. Let's talk about South Carolina for a minute because Newt Gingrich won South Carolina. He didn't just win it, he won it. I sure. mean, he, he dominated the, the vote here. Mm -hmm. But that's about it. That's about all we've, we've seen from him. He went on to Florida where he didn't do as well and then basically was blown away in, in the subsequent states. Mm -hmm. Is it too late for him or is could Super Tuesday and Georgia and some of the other southern states help him get back in the, in the race? 
you know, I think this season anything is possible. And he certainly has two, I think, strong possibilities in, in on Super Tuesday. Clearly, Georgia, his home state, the state that he represented in the House of Representatives, um, should be a win for him. Um, that's a large state and it's a large media market, so there are a lot of people paying attention there. Um, its neighbor, Tennessee, he has a possibility of performing well there, although he'll be in probably strong competition with Rick Santorum, who would appeal to a lot of the more uh, conservative evangelical voters in Tennessee. Um, so it's not out of the realm of possibility that he would stay in. He's also very well funded still at this point. He has a lot of super PAC money, and I think as long as he has the money and the message, he'll stay in the race. Has Gingrich hurt Santorum and Santorum hurt Gingrich, I suppose, to fight for that conservative vote? Yeah, and there have been some polls and some exit polling in states that have already held their, their races um, that indicate that that's, that's true. That, in fact, had Gingrich been out of the race at some point, Santorum would be winning larger margins and vice versa. And those two have to reckon with one another, um, but they really haven't so far. They've actually focused more on Mitt Romney and less on one another, um, and you know that's made for an interesting dynamic. With just a few seconds left, what is your expert advice on what to look out for on Tuesday? I would really look at Ohio. I know that sounds cliche at this point in American <laughs> politics, but Ohio is a major swing state. It's a huge battleground for Mitt Romney and Rick Santorum. Um, Mitt Romney should play well with some of the voters, uh, the more moderate voters there um, in the Republican Party and the Republican primary. Rick Santorum should play well with the middle class, blue collar workers. That's really the target population he's been looking at. So I think Ohio is going to be a huge, huge race to watch. Dr. Holly Tankersley with Coastal Carolina University, thanks for talking politics sure. with me today. Stay with us. We'll be right back.